Hello folks, thanks for tuning in. Um, I would like to read you a news article. I'll admit it's a little bit on the older side. It was just, um, when was it? It was the end of uh, 2017. And uh, I made a video about something like this and I at the time I made the video I didn't even know this news article existed and it it's funny how my video and this article parallel first of all I'm extremely tired if you hear me stutter or just go out of it for a while I during this video I had a long day anyway let me uh, read you this and um, this is gonna be a quick video title of the article is Slippery Slope? Question mark. Cities across the country allowing non-citizens to vote. <coughs> Let me read this. A small Maryland city drew attention, drew national attention this week for allowing non-citizens, including illegal immigrants, to cast ballots in local elections. But it's just the latest mun municipality to do so. <clears throat> In a trend that has some worried, the changing definition of voter could erode what it means to be a citizen. It's a slippery slope, said Ira Melman, spokesman for the Federation for American Im Immigration Reform, also known as FAIR. College Park, which approved the policy Tuesday, became the 11th municipality, the 11th by the way, in Maryland alone to allow non-citizens to vote in local races. Supporters cast the change as an important step. To me, expanding access to the right to vote in our country is something that expands our community voice, not something that contracts it, Mayor Patrick Woe John said, according to the Washington Post, Woe wo John, W O J A H N, Patrick Woe John. College Park Council member Fazul Kabir, all these names you can't even pronounce anymore. What happened? I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be um, a bigot here, but. You can't even pronounce anybody's name anymore. <laughs> so, College Park Council member Fazul Kabir tried to rein in the measure. He said he introduced two amendments. One, to delay the vote to give the council more time to speak with constituents. And other, to only allow green card holders to participate in local elections. Both amendments were struck down. Hmm. Kabir said he did not vote at all. My problem was about the procedure. I think we went too fast and didn't give our residents a chance to speak. That is my frustration, Kabir told Fox News on Sunday. So Kabir Fazul, Fazul Kabir seems to be a, uh, a conservative... Um, spokesperson or politician. They don't say who he is. Kabir told Fox News on Friday, it is a very heavy subject and we have to be very careful. Well, maybe he's not that conservative. Uh, I personally don't think you need to be um, very careful. Uh, in my opinion, the right to vote should be only for the citizen. I mean, that is probably one of the biggest reasons immigrants decide to become citizens is the right to influence elections. And that's a good thing. I'm not saying that's bad. But that's part of becoming a citizen. You have the right to say so in your community. Kabir told Fox News that he sees both good things and risk in allowing non-citizens to vote. Here's where we get to the meat and potatoes of this article. And it's not much longer before it ends, by the way. The good thing is that it gives more residents the chance to make elected people more responsible. Huh? More accountable. Huh? Kabir said, 
but the risk is that this could be a slippery slope. Other cities can do this, and the change could trickle down beyond College Park to counties and states, and it could even become a national issue. That's the risk I was feeling. Wojan did not respond to Fox News' request for a comment. By the way, I'm going to put a link to both the video I made just last year, and believe it or not, they use the same freaking verbiage I used in my video, diluting the American vote, diluting our way of life. That's with this article. I'm going to give you two links in the comment section below, one to my, um, my video and one to directly to this article, so you can read it if I'm um, going too fast. Apart from a couple of towns that allowed the practice beforehand, the liberal enclave of Tacoma Park kicked off the trend in Maryland back in 1992. So this has been going on since 1992, folks, when it, became, when it began to allow non-citizens to vote in the mayoral and city council elections. Several other cities and towns followed. Where it's allowed, not a non-citizen voting only applies to local races. Non-citizens cannot vote in federal elections. Well, but see, here's the problem I have with that sentence. I'm going to I'm going to repeat that. Where it is allowed, non-citizen voting only applies to local races. Non-citizens non-citizens cannot vote in federal elections. Well, the problem is a lot of times your local races they elect board members, whatever it is. And, and, and once these folks are in office, whether it's a mayoral office or just a, a city council, they then have a stepping stone to go into higher offices like senators and co well, like Congress and Senate. I'm not saying that's the only avenue to get there, but it is a very nice stepping stone, ain't it? It would by being by by winning a local election it does give you a nice stepping stone it doesn't guarantee you the stepping stone but it does give you a nice stepping stone to go into a higher office like congress or senate or something like that so in my opinion it does affect the federal level let's see where was i Okay, San Francisco also plans to allow non-citizens to vote in local board of, of election. Okay, okay, they're just, I just said this. San Francisco also plans to allow non-citizens to vote in local board of education races. The, 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 elect, the, the, the school board, basically. Beginning in 2018. In Massachusetts, both Amherst and Cambridge have moved to introduce non-citizen voting and are awaiting approval, according to Massachusetts State House News Service. What I bet all these states are states that, how do I say this, are the states where they are losing liberal voters? For the past few years, New York city has weighed whether to allow non-citizens to participate in city elections. But opponents like Mel Melman, whose group advocates for lower immigration levels, call this shift an assault on the whole... Let me read this again because I kind of like... My eyes are going in and out. I'm so tired. But opponents like Melman, that's the guy from FAIR, whose group advocates for lower immigration levels, called the, the shift an assault on the whole concept of citizenship and what it means. I just said that earlier in the video, in this video. That's one of the biggest reasons to become a citizen, so you have these rights to vote. I mean, if you have every right there is as an American citizen, but you're not an American citizen, why become American citizen? If anybody who just wanders, wanders in and has the same right, and an equal right, 
on how this country is run, then essentially the whole concept of the nation becomes meaningless, he says. And Jessica Vaughn, director of, of policy studies for the Conservative Center of, for Immigration Studies, called it one more form of erosion of the meaning of American citizenship. Politicians should not dilute. Remember I that word, dilute, when you go look at my video link. I use that word. And I didn't even know this article existed. Otherwise, I would have read it back then. Politicians should not dilute the vote of citizens by allowing those who have no claim to this privilege and whose interests might conflict with the interest of citizens to vote, Vaughn told Fox News in an email. Besides, obtaining the right to vote is something that encourages legal immigrants to become citizens, which is beneficial to our country. I think I'm going to just stop there. Um, well, actually, just one more sentence in the article. It's political pandering of the worst kind. This country, it's not for immigrants. Okay? This country, it is for American citizens. Politicians are not for immigrants. Politicians are for us American citizens, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, they're not for immigrants. They're for us, American citizens. And it will be for immigrants when they do it legally and become American citizens. But to hand over the keys to the kingdom and allow them to influence our way of life, to dilute the American way of life, the American dream. It's horrific. It is, it is treasonous. Anyway, folks, I appreciate a thumbs up. This kind of disgusts me. It really does. Give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate a, uh, a subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. You folks have a great night. I am so tired. I, I put in 12 hours today. I am pooped. Folks, you have a great day.